So I'm Brenda Martin, Diamond Ambassador, and we have with us Charlotte Seams Sapphire. And for just a couple minutes, Amanda is going to join us and share her story. Amanda's from California, and I got to know her a few months ago. Well, it seems like it. Maybe it hasn't even been that long. Um, when she joined our team, and she has a life-changing story she's going to share with us really briefly. Um, I'm sure she'd love to go into more detail <laughs> if um, she could, but we're going to keep it short and sweet, and she's going to um, bless us with that. So go ahead, Amanda. Okay. Hi, you guys. My name is Amanda. Um, so I would say before I found Plexus, I was, I was just constantly exhausted. I was always sad. I was always just, life felt too much. I had horrible brain fog. I, um, I had severe discomfort in my muscles, my joints, just all over my body. Whenever I got to be stressed, um, I would just go to sleep for days on end. I was on disability for a very, very long time. And um, I was in and out of doctor's appointments, procedures. I was constantly getting blood drawn, and they didn't know what was going on. Um, fast forward a little bit, Dr. Daniel Willis, my chiropractor, actually introduced me to Plexus. And he had known me for a little bit, and he thought that it, it could really help me. And so I decided to take the 60-day challenge. And two months in, my brain fog was gone. Um, that discomfort I was having all over my body was gone. And I just have so much more energy and I would not trade it for the world. It turned my life upside down and I'm just, that's my passion now. And I'm so excited to share it with everyone because it's truly life changing and I just, I'm in love with it. Ooh, awesome. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? I mean, for a young girl that was li not living a quality life, she can now. And she has told me a couple of times, it feels like she's found a calling that she didn't know she had. She's found a purpose that's just been amazing and she's been helping others and growing her own little team already. So <laughs> super excited for you, Amanda. Thanks so much for being on. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> okay, so I hope that gets you guys all excited about what we have to share because there are more people out there like Amanda suffering and waiting to hear from us. So what do we need, Charlotte? Okay, we're going to talk about the top five ways to build belief in yourself. Now you've heard us talk about how we need to have belief in the products and belief in the company, and those are really, really important. But the foundation of all of it is what you believe about yourself. And that is because what you believe about yourself will come out in your business. It will get you stuck. It'll show up in, in how you talk to people. People will feel that. They will even feel it in your Facebook posts, what you believe about yourself. And so we're going to talk about some ways to build belief in yourself. The first one is awareness. And what I mean by that is becoming aware of what you believe about yourself, of what you're saying to yourself. And here's one to think about, to be aware of your imagination. What are you imagining every day about yourself and your business when you think about it? Are you thinking about how slow everything's going? Are you, are you telling everybody, I don't have any rock stars? Are you constantly dwelling on how far you have to go? That's using your imagination. And what we imagine, what we think about is what we basically end up creating in our life. We move towards what we think about. And so the first thing is to be aware of that because you can't change something if you're not aware of it. So that is number one. So Brenda, what do you have to say about that? Well, in, in listening to you and thinking of the awareness is comes along with that is maybe um, being willing to acknowledge and not deny, you know, when you are aware of that to not just be like, Oh, I, it, that doesn't really affect me or, I can't really help it because that's just how it's always been. I can't imagine anything different, you know, excuses and denial. I think really owning the fact that you do have a wrong mindset, you aren't using your imagination the way you should, um, goes along with that awareness. So I think you have to have a willingness to change when you see an area that isn't um, like it should be in your self-talk and your thinking and your imagining. Um, so that kind of brings us to our next point of needing to do the correct purposeful self-talk. Like it's not going to change if you don't purpose and if you don't make it a point 
and dedicate yourself to doing that. Last week, we had uh, my friend Jen Rydé on, who is a life coach, and she talked about just setting aside, you know, a few minutes in the morning to do that. Find a quiet place where, you're, where you can think and focus and say your personal affirmations. And you guys know, we've talked about personal affirmations before. If this is new to you, it simply means repeating things to yourself in present tense that may not be true yet, but that you want to be true about yourself, about your success, the things you say to yourself, like, I really can't ever be a diamond like Brenda. I can't ever really be a sapphire like Charlotte, but I'll, I'll see what I can do and I'll, I'll do my best. You need to be saying things to yourself like, I can be a diamond. If they can do it, I can do it. Um, build yourself up with that purposeful self-talk and make sure you're doing it every single day. Charlotte, you're amazing at all that. So I'm sure you can add to add more. Well, and part of the of how that works is the repetition of it, because um, your brain eventually, whatever you're repeating and thinking about the most will take on as the truth. And the Bible talks about um, taking every thought captive. It doesn't say, you know, it, taking things captive is like, you know, you're going for it. And it's, it's um, something that is um, purposeful. Like she said, you're on the offensive. You're not just letting um, your thoughts go where they need to, where, wherever they go, you are choosing what you're going to focus on. And along with that self-talk and taking that time, maybe when you first wake up in the morning or when right before you go to bed, is to also take that time to imagine. God gave us our imagination. Do you know that at the Tower of Babel, before he destroyed it, he said nothing they have imagined will be too hard for them because he knew the power of our imagination. And so um, take time to choose what you want to imagine. Think about your diamond documentary. And this may sound so corny, but it is actually scriptural principles um, that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. There are so many places in the Bible where it talks about that. And we were created in the image of God. And so to take the time, not only speaking those words, of self-talk and affirmation, but to think about what you want in your business. Maybe it's too big for you to imagine your diamond documentary. Okay, so right now, start imagining all those new ambassador emails in your inbox. Imagine your Facebook group growing. Imagine before you send a message to someone, imagine them saying, oh, this is what I've been looking for. Because that those kinds of things will come across. You know, you can't fake it. You can't be negative and not believe in yourself and then go out there and try to act like you do because it'll come across in the words you choose and your posture and your energy and people will feel it. And so that's why it's so important to be sure that you're pouring into yourself that belief and that will shift your belief in yourself. And so that goes on into other ways that you can build belief in yourself. And that is personal growth books and audios. And, and what happens is people work on this, they'll read one book maybe, and then they get busy and they don't do any more. And this needs to be a constant process of books and listening to audios. You can fold laundry and load the dishwasher while you're listening to things. Some, a lot of that personal growth can be um, Plexus videos and things you're listening to, but also specific personal growth, like um, the book, What to Say When You Talk to Yourself. Um, there are lots of other ones we can give you recommendations, but um, and not just network marketing books, but personal growth where you're starting to understand yourself and why you react the way you do and some fears that you have that are holding you back. And that has to be a constant process. And it's awesome because God is using Plexus to do work in you that needed to be done. And so, um, you know, it's just an amazing process, actually. So, Brenda. I agree with that. I was just thinking the line of how neat this business can be because it helps us in areas that we probably needed to work on before, but we were never forced to. We never desired to. We never maybe understood how. And, you know, for me, it was things like just just people skills, just sharpening my people skills. And um, now I feel like I can be a better relationship builder and a better friend than I used to be because it's something I'm working on. So it, it's it's just... Yes, you want the success in your business, but what's so cool about this business is that it's bringing success to your family, to your family life, to your outlook on life, to your relationships. 
and to the people that you bring on. I know this is a little bit off track, but it just came to my mind and I feel like I should share it. Remember, the way you talk about your team to me is, is as equally critical as the way you talk about yourself. So when you talk about yourself being successful, you need to include your team and talk to yourself about the people on your team um, that they are amazing. They are great people to have on your team. Don't talk down about the people on your team, even to yourself. And I'm speaking to myself here. <clears throat> I see somebody, <clears throat> excuse me, who seems like they just, they just don't catch on. They aren't coachable or, you know, you, you're seeing these things in people, which is good. You, you, you're identifying ways that you can, um, areas that they need help in so you can help them. But then to not focus on that, focus on their strengths and speak to yourself about your team in that way. Um, but, you know, another aspect that we do need to do for ourselves in our growth, in our self belief is in um, our spiritual growth. And, you know, it's so, so tied in to how we talk to ourselves because God designed our brains and he knew that the things we say to ourselves, the things we believe about ourselves and the things that we believe that he said about us will affect our life. It's what's going to make that difference in our joy and in our, our happiness and in our security in Christ. When we believe what he said about us, that's like the foundation to me of our self-talk. If you can say to yourself the things that God says about you, wow, that's a great beginning right there to understand how he looks at you and what he did for you and embrace that and say it. I am um, the righteousness of Christ. If you truly believe that, it can become reality for you. And that's another area of huge growth. It was for me anyway, and I'm hoping it can be for um, some of you. Charlotte, do you have some thoughts to add to that? Well, I read a definition that said to repent means to change the way you think. And I thought that was an interesting statement because when, if we're going to repent and say, well, I'm going to be different now, but then we just go on thinking the same things, we're going to act the same way. And so sometimes there needs to be a stopping point and, you know, you stop thinking that way. Um, you know, even along the same lines of what she was saying about, you know, how we talk about our teams. There's another saying that I read, and that is expectations are premeditated resentments. And so if we have expectations of other people or expectations for how our business should go or how fast we should get to the next rank, that's a premeditated resentment. And it can cause shame if we make speed, you know, the measure of our success. And so we've just got to be careful about um, how we're thinking. That's just another example. And then now this last one was, is, was a big realization for me. And that was number five is stop saying that you don't believe in yourself. We say that all the time and it's almost like, you know, well, I don't, I just, I struggle the most with believing in myself. You know, I just don't believe in myself. Stop saying that because you're speaking that over yourself. You're speaking death. It can actually end up being an excuse and a crutch to keep you stuck. And it almost every time you say that in your brain hears it, it gives you permission to not believe in yourself. And so stop saying it. There's just, um, you know, um, we're adding emotion to that. Every time we say it, one purpose of emotion is reinforcement. And so what are you reinforcing in your brain? Every time you're saying things like, I don't believe in myself. So a huge thing is stop saying that and replace that with whatever it is that you want. And, and you just think of, you figure out the words every time that, that comes to mind or you're tempted to say it, what are you going to replace that with? Um, I'm so excited for what's ahead for me. I mean, whatever, you know, that would be better than saying, I just don't believe in myself. Because that's an excuse to keep us small and not let us go big and, and be who we are and be bold and share plexus. It's a, it's a way that's kind of safe and it's a story we tell ourselves and we're telling other people that story. And it's a story because believe in yourself. That's part of it is a choice to believe in yourself. So Brenda, do you have anything to close? We're pretty Well, good. that was so good. I don't really feel like I need to add anything except I keep seeing the board behind you on the wall that says dream big. And it's so fitting for what you just shared. I just want to end with, guys, 
Do not be afraid to dream big. I, I know that just sounds so cliche because we say that all the time, or at least I feel like I do. But seriously, I feel like that was the reason from the beginning that I um, committed to this business and worked it every day because I had a big dream and I wasn't afraid to go for it. So it might mean getting out of your comfort zone. It might mean, like Charlotte said, getting away from what's you know comfortable, what, what you know, and, and getting out there and doing something that may feel too big, but you won't regret it. I don't know of anyone who has. And so just don't, don't let that hold you back. You can do this. I, I, we have so many amazing people on our team. I'm just blown away with the potential and what I am seeing. I don't want to tell you guys come across like, oh, we don't, nobody's doing this. And so we're trying to get you doing it. We see people doing it and we are just excited for you and know you can keep on. So don't ever say things to yourself. It's going to let you um, hold you back because um, this team is rocking and rolling it. And I know y'all can keep right on at it. Okay, we hope this helped. And um, if you need some Absolutely. suggestions for books or audios, you can ask in the groups and we're happy to pass that on. So everybody just go out there and share Plexus. So good night. That's right. Good night.